I know that you've been following the situation developing uh, during this Russia-Ukraine war now. And uh, one thing that most uh, Western media are not de probably downplaying is the neo-Nazi groups in Ukraine. And a lot of people are saying, well, that's not a problem. That's just Putin's, Putin's propaganda that doesn't exist. And Zelensky is Jewish. How can there be uh, Nazis in Ukraine? But it, I just did a research like 80 years ago, in 2014, when the group was just formed. Actually, BBC, Newsnight, several, including The Guardians, they all wrote articles about the, the far-right groups uh, that are really concerning. <laughs> Well, there can be few more poignant depictions of how unfinished Ukraine's revolution is than this site. All of these people bearing the banners of the far-right group, these people who helped overthrow Ukraine's pro-Russian president a year and a half ago, and they've been telling me that they want to bring down this president as well. Glory to Ukraine, they shout. Groups of armed men strut through the square with dubious iconography. That yellow armband is a Volksangel, a German symbol used by several SS divisions during the Second World War. Far-right graffiti is appearing, daubed on the walls of the city. Are you a Nazi? Uh, no, I don't think I'm a Nazi. I'm a Ukrainian nationalist. And what does that mean? The main confrontation is uh, about that some ethnic groups uh, have uh, control uh, many business structures, some economic, some political forces, and uh, which ethnic groups? Uh, 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 Russians and Jews and the Poles. It may be uh, every some uh, non-Ukrainian group control a huge percent of some economic or political uh, power and. Uh, uh, of course, in this situation, uh, Ukrainian people have uh, some uh, tension between it and it causes uh, conflict. So being, they, are, they recognize, well, this is a group of white supremacists. So even the Western media are recognizing this problem 80 years ago, six years, six years ago, but they're just not mentioning that now, because probably because it's not convenient. So, but these neo-Nazis are fighting on the front lines, fighting with the Russian troops and being incorporated with the Ukraine uh, National Guard, I think. Uh, how dangerous could that be, in your opinion? Well, look, um, you know, when, when uh, uh, I was very, very young, uh, my parents were serving in the uh, uh, Kashmir mission, the UN mission uh, in Pakistan, India, um, and we were living in Islamabad. Uh, and back then we took a trip and we went to uh, uh, Khyber Pass, and this is right on the border with, uh, with Afghanistan. And uh, Pakistan is a very beautiful country, very beautiful. But my, my point is, when we went to that area, uh, there was a sign that said, you know, you go beyond this point, there's no government uh, uh, help, you're on your own. Uh, and because this was kind of like the Wild West there, it's, it's not controlled by the government, it's controlled by groups, by militias. And this is the early 90s. So who are these people? Very obviously, these are the remnants of the Mujahideen, which are back for the CIA to fight the Soviets. And they, this is the beginning of the formation of Al Qaeda. And so my point here is that we're seeing a very similar uh, uh, trend where the United States and its allies are going to foreign countries and they are finding these fringe groups. Uh, back then, it was the, the Mujahideen, you know, they had recruited these foreign fighters from all over to fight the Soviets. And right now we are saying the same thing again in Ukraine where they're bringing, uh, uh, you know, some of the worst uh, people, uh, the, they're scum, the, these neo-Nazis. They are white supremacists, they, they are violent racists. And they're bringing these people together all for the sake of fighting the Russians. So once again, you see that there's a pattern here where uh, the CIA, the U.S. government, they, they are getting in bed uh, with some of the most, uh, you know, disgusting uh, fringe groups that you can possibly think of. And they are they're quite mm -hmm. shameless about it. So back then, you know, in the 80s to fight the Soviets in Afghanistan, it was the, the Mujahideen and that later became Al Qaeda. And look at the blowback. And you think they learned from that? Of course not. Then when, when it comes to Syria, uh, from you know the war that started in 2011, they they were telling us for for ages. They'll still tell you to this day that there are moderate rebels. There's no such thing as moderate mm -hmm. rebels. If there were, they've been wiped out a long a long time ago. Ironically, by Al Qaeda. So again, the United States didn't learn the lesson from Afghanistan. Uh, it, it came into Syria, and again, it's not just mm -hmm. the U.S. It's Saudi Arabia. It's Qatar. It's the U.K. and 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 Israel. And they're working with Al Qaeda and its affiliates inside Syria all for the sake of fighting the Syrian government.
So again, they don't learn anything. And, and these groups, I mean, they were so close to taking the capital. You had gr uh, groups like uh, Jaysh al-Islam, Faylaq al-Rahman, these groups that are backed by Saudi Arabia and Qatar, which were, I mean, literally, uh, uh, they're almost inside Damascus. They're in Jobar, the district Jobar. I mean, they're almost basically, they took the city. They were this close to taking the city. And, and these groups are, uh, they're radicals. They're far-right extremists. They, they, not, they don't just kill minorities like, like Christians. They kill other Muslims. That's always the, the thing. These, these uh, extremist groups are actually the killing Muslims the most, other Muslims. And they're backed by the U.S. And here again, we look at Ukraine and we have this situation where these neo-Nazi groups like the Azov Battalion, C-14, they are being backed not just with, with lethal aid, with, with money and with weapons, but even with the propaganda machine, the, the, the mainstream media are backing them. And it's very interesting because you pointed to how a few years ago, they were quite conscious of the fact that these are far-right nationalists. And I, I was even showing my viewers the other day a program on NBC, uh, which again, <laughs> I was surprised that NBC did this, but it was in 2017. So I don't think you would see that today. Mm. And they were showing how <laughs> you have these, yeah, they were showing how you have these training camps uh, uh, that are run by mm. far right nationalists in Ukraine to train children and brainwash them. And, it, you know, it's, it's quite sick. And the, the fact that they're trying to hide this now is really something. Just the other day on Twitter, for example, NATO, the, uh, the uh, uh, Western Military Alliance, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, N NATO posted a picture on Twitter of, of yeah, these yeah. brave Ukrainian <laughs> soldiers, right? And one of the women in this photograph, she had a, a symbol, a patch on her chest um, of something mm -hmm. that's called a, uh, a uh, Schwarze Sonne, which is a black sun. And this is a strictly Nazi symbol. And I know there are people who say, well, yeah. no, this, this symbol predates the Nazis. And they say the same thing about the swastika. Yes, but in certain contexts and in certain uh, the ways that it was drawn, this is definitely a Nazi symbol. There's no question about it. And they deleted the tweet. So, you know, they, they're aware <laughs> of what's going on. They know. And just the, uh, uh, earlier, I saw the foreign ministry of Ukraine on Twitter. They posted... Um, a picture of two girls with the same symbol right here. It's so shameless. It's absolutely shameless. And the fact that they want to say that, well, you know, this is just Putin propaganda. This is just Kremlin propaganda. The neo-Nazis, they're just a tiny group. Okay, fair enough. But I would say to you, why is the leader of C-14, one of these nationalist groups, he's going and bragging at a, at a, a press conference. It's on YouTube. You can watch it. Um, just in, on February 5th, so just a month ago, he's bragging how... Yes, we are a minority. The, the neo-Nazis are a minority, but they have more influence than everybody else on the field and politically speaking. So the, these, they're very well aware of, of uh, their agenda. They're very well aware of what their goals are, and they're quite shameless about it. And the only people that are having a tough time grasping this are unfortunately the targets of uh, the target audiences of Western mainstream media. It's like they, they just don't want to accept reality. And then one day it will come out again that, oh, you see NATO was supporting neo-Nazis, and by then it, it will be too late. It, it's the same thing like with Al-Qaeda in Syria or um, uh, the Mujahideen in, in Afghanistan. You know, it, it, by the time people get it, it will be maybe 20 years later. But that's what's happening right yeah. now, and we, we shouldn't, even, even if it's 1%, why are they doing this? How can you back neo-Nazis? Like, how can you justify this in any capacity? And I would add one more thing. Again, I don't want to justify um, everything that Russia is doing, but I do think it's important to put into context the, the Russians, they lost over 20 million people fighting the Nazis. So this is not a joke for them. 20 million. I think, honestly, the figures are about 26 million. The vast majority of them are civilians. Um, there are uh, millions of Soviets who were taken uh, prisoners of war. Back then, the, the Germans, um, as an excuse to massacre them because they viewed the Russians as, as subhuman, as Unter mentioned, they said the Russians didn't sign the Geneva Convention, so we don't have to respect them, and they just massacred all the prisoners, which, which again, is against the Geneva Convention. And they, they, they starved them to death because they viewed the Russians as Slavic people, as, as subhuman, and they had this racial hatred against them. Uh, again, R Russia suffered more than any other country during World War II, uh, which is really saying something because, honestly, everybody suffered, right? But, but they really sacrificed the most people, and they, ca they caused 80% of German casualties that was caused by the Russians in World War II. So they have a very big grudge, uh, culturally speaking, historically speaking. So I, I, I wouldn't take this lightly in the context with Russia. Again, it doesn't justify everything that's happening. I'm, I'm against war. I always prefer that there's diplomacy. And I really hope that there will be a diplomatic solution because it, it breaks my heart to see refugees and see people suffering that have nothing to do with their governments. They have nothing to do with the politics. Um, uh, but nevertheless, I think we, we, we should not forget that. Well, it's dangerous because 
we know what happened. Like you, the United States, like basically they 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 helped to create Al Qaeda, and it backfired a few years later. We saw what happened during nine eleven and the spread of terrorism, and it also spread it to Xinjiang, of course, to China. I mean, that's how we had a serious terrorism attacks in Xinjiang across across China. A group of violent uh, extremists being trained overseas and come back to Xinjiang, spread this. Uh, a very extreme version of, of Islam that is just not part of the Uyghurs culture. And now Uyghurs were being bullied, abused, and killed by those extremists. And the United States didn't care about the Uyghurs back then, funny enough. And, and they bombed the mosques in Syria. And suddenly they care about how many mosques Uyghurs have in China now. They suddenly care so much about the Muslims in China. It's so funny. And you know, the terrorism in Xinjiang was part of their problem, part of what they did. And now they are using Xinjiang to, I mean, to, to separate China. Really, I, I cannot tell you, um, again, I'm, I'm Christian, but, but I, I, when I see what the Americans did to a city like Fallujah, uh, uh, it breaks my heart, really. It, it, it really makes me sad inside. You know, Fallujah is known um, as the city of mosques because there's so many minarets, there's so many mosques. They, they didn't just destroy that, that city once, but multiple times, right? The first battle of Fallujah, the second battle of Fallujah. It's, so it's not just during the invasion in 2003, it's also afterwards, even when they're fighting ISIS, they leveled the city, they leveled it. I mean, this is shameful, shameful. Uh, uh, not just, it's truly a crime against humanity. And uh, uh, they they have the nerve then to turn around and pretend like they care about Muslims in in uh, in Xinjiang or or anywhere else. They only use this because it's propaganda purposes. They 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 use people uh, as tokens. You know they they want to, for example, in Syria they get with the the Kurds. They pretend to care about the Kurds. They don't care about them. They just want to use them against the Syrian government, for example. And it's the same thing with the the Uyghurs. They don't care about Uyghurs uh, in any capacity. They just want to uh, promote separatism in China. It's classic divide and conquer. It, it's the classic strategy, right? Mm. Divide and conquer by promoting separatism in Tibet, in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, and in, in Xinjiang. And then, of course, it, it, the irony here is that you have the, um, the TIP, the Turkmenistan Islamic Party, w which is in Syria, mm. right? I, again, I don't know if people, people know this. I, I always repeat this because it's astonishing. In northern Syria, in Idlib, which is the last um, terrorist stronghold where you have, I think, 20 to 30,000 uh, uh, jihadists, uh, terrorist fighters, uh, 5,000 of them are actually from this terrorist group, the TIP, uh, uh, these uh, uh, Uyghurs that have been uh, uh, promoted by the US. The United States under Donald Trump removed this group from the list of terrorist uh, groups. I wonder why, because they're an, an effective tool to use against the Syrian government and the Chinese government. So again, you, you see how uh, in another example here, the United States is getting in bed with extremist groups and promoting terrorism. Uh, beyond its borders because it suits its foreign policy objectives. And the fact that people can't wake up to this, it, it's, it's really infuriating, you know, but we have, to, we have to keep doing what we're doing and trying to raise, raise awareness. And yeah, again, I just wanted to add, like the, they, they pretend to care about Muslims. Uh, uh, come on, I mean, th th this is insulting. You know, they, they talk about uh, a genocide in China. Who, who invaded Libya? Uh, uh, sorry, who destroyed Libya and invaded Iraq and Afghanistan and Syria and, and killed millions, millions of Muslims and made million more Muslims refugees? Was that not NATO? How can you deny this? It's not even history. It's right now. It's contemporary. We're, we're still living through that. We are still living through the effects of this genocide, this, this mass assault on the Middle East, where they've set half the Middle East on fire under their war on terror. It's a war of terror, and the primary target were Muslims. And then they have the nerve to turn around and pretend they care about uh, uh, Uyghurs. Stop this. This is insulting. And, and even another thing I would add, you have people like Marco Rubio in, in the US Congress um, and others like him who pretend to care about uh, Christians in Iraq and Syria. And then they go and they kill someone like General Soleimani. General Soleimani was defending and saving Christians uh, uh, in Syria churches were holding mass for Soleimani after he was assassinated by the U.S., just to show you how much that he's appreciated by all people there. And then they, they, they claim in the U.S. Congress that they care about minorities in the Middle East and they want to save Christians, but then they are going and killing the man who is actually saving Christians on the ground. Again, it, it's, it's such a, an, a, an angering double standard on all fronts for all groups, and it's, uh, it's really upsetting. But we have to talk about it. We have to make it clear that this is a raging hypocrisy on all fronts.